Well, we thank God for another opportunity to uh, bring a message. And um, the message that we have today is uh, focused on loyalty. Uh, loyalty to God, loyalty to authority over us. Loyalty. Loyalty. Um, I glad that this opportunity uh, has come at this time. Uh, my name is Alaba Obiri, uh, pastor at the Freedom Life Foursquare Church here in Houston. We're located at uh, 4002 Highway 6 South, uh, Houston, Texas, zip code 77082. Um, and before I go into the message of loyalty, I would uh, want to read from uh, scriptures uh, in Ruth chapter 1, verse 6, uh, 6 to 18. Ruth chapter 1, verses 6 to 18. Then she arose with her daughter-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had visited his people by giving them bread. Uh, therefore she went out from the place where she was and her two daughters-in-law with her. And they went on the way to return to the land of Moab, to the land of Judah, excuse me. And Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find rest each in the house of her husband. So she kissed them and they, left up, they lifted up their voices and wept. And they said to her, Surely we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are there still sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband tonight and should also bear sons, would you wait for them till they were grown? Would you restrain from yourself, yourselves from having husbands? No, my daughters, for it grieves me very much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again. And Orpha kissed uh, her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. And she said, Look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go, and wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Ruth, uh, excuse me, where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts you and me. When she saw that she was determined to go with her, she stopped speaking to her. That was Ruth chapter 1, verses 6 to 18. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, your word has gone forth as we have read it. And as we uh, go into the message, I pray for understanding for the hearers. I pray for wisdom to discern the truth and to have the ability to apply it to, to, to each life. Have your way, O oh Lord. Take full control. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Again, we're talking of loyalty. Uh, in our case, loyalty to God and to uh, authority he has placed over us. 
Uh, it is often the case that where you have a situation of successive leadership, more often in politics, the new leader will more likely pursue more vigorously what they see to be their own agenda than whatever scheme or program the one that they succeeded were pursuing, however pure or laudable uh, the latter might be. We will be familiar with that. They usually want to be able to justify it to their supporters that they accomplished what they promised that they will do. While the rightness of that approach may be questionable, it brings us to the matter of being loyal to a cause. In our case, we have a situation in which each of us at one point in time was heading a destructive path and then encountered a savior that God sent our way who saved and restored us back to newness of life with a promise of eternity with him. In such a case, it is not out of place. In fact, it is expected that one would resolve to become committed and totally loyal to that God. When we talk of becoming loyal to God, it's a matter of unshakable resolve and unrelenting pursuit of God, almost to the point of reckless abandon. To seek him, serve him, and pursue the cause of his kingdom. Then the question I would ask is, what have you resolved? What have you resolved in pursuing your loyalty to God? Now, where do you begin? Well, I would say at the place of salvation. Do you now have a story of salvation from sin? Can you recall it? Do you remember it and the circumstances that led to it? Can you tell the story? In John 3, 5 and 6, Jesus answered, he says, most assuredly, I said to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. And in uh, John 1, 12, we read, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believed in his name. We are all born of the flesh, but we are not all born again of the Spirit. And that is why uh, while we all are here being born of the flesh, it's a conscious decision we must make to be born of the Spirit. Only God the creator of heaven and earth could have put together the work of salvation. We are told in John 3, 16, that popular verse, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Without being born again, a man's life is wasted, and that man is totally lost. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel's sake will save it. Those are the words of Jesus. He said, for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? As uh, a quote from Mark chapter 8, verses 35 and 36. Now, if you have experience that salvation, knowing where you are you are coming from, then you ought to be totally loyal to God who gave you the salvation. Matthew 23, 5 to 8 tells us, 
But all their works they do to be seen by men. They make their phylacteries broad and enlarge the borders of their garments. They love the best places at feasts, the best seats at the synagogues, greetings in the marketplace, and be called by men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But we do not need to be called Rabbi, for one is your teacher, the Christ, and you are all brethren. This is what Jesus says. The religious leaders, they like titles. They want to be called rabbi. And we like titles today too. We like titles. <laughs> of different things. Uh, people don't answer. If their name is called without the appellation of their title. Oh, he didn't I didn't know it was me you are calling. You didn't put, uh, I didn't hear uh, reverend. I didn't hear pastor. I didn't hear doctor. I mean, that's the way things are with us today. Now, let's look at the story of uh, uh, Ruth. When Naomi told her, look, your sister-in-law had gone back to her gods. You also return after your sister-in-law. And then Ruth said, no, no. Don't say that again. I think we've passed that. Where you die, I will die. That is loyalty. And where you are buried, I will bury. He even swore, may the Lord do so to me and more. If anything but death puts past you and I, and then at that point, Naomi realized the, the conversation is over. Brethren, you just need to be loyal, committed. If indeed we have chosen to follow the Lord, to make him the Lord of our life, we have to turn our heart, our mind, the totality of our being to serve him. We will not let anything separate us from doing his will. That was Ruth. No wonder God honored her. God prospered her. And in fact, as, we, as it turned out, the lineage of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, was traced back to Ruth. Who? Originally came from Moab. God will honor those who honor him. That's his word. Well, it's not only Ruth. We also have uh, the case of Joseph. There's more to learn from the story of Joseph. You see that uh, uh, example or that uh, story we had in uh, Genesis 39, verses 8 and 9, says, But he refused and said to his master's wife, Look, my master does not know what is with me in this house, and he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is no one greater in this house than I, nor has he kept back anything from me but you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Uh, Joseph talked so highly of what his, how his master has treated him. But he, he, he knew all of that is the hand of God walking through in his life. And if he took advantage of it like his master's wife was luring him to, he would have dishonored God. He would have failed. He would I mean, how can I do this wickedness and sin against God? And of course, talking of loyalty, he was loyal to God. Rather than dishonor God, he would rather 
go to prison or even be killed. He ran. He f <laughs> flee from his master's wife. Of course, you know the story. He ended up in prison. Paul was another example. We're talking of loyalty now. Paul was totally loyal to God. It was not always like that. He was violent against Christians. He was arresting them. He was putting them in prison. But when God encountered him and he saved his soul, Paul, who was a well-read um, person, he now said, as he wrote down in uh, Philippians 3, 7 to 9, but what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed I lost count of all things for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is true faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. And he said in Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. These are glowing examples for us to learn from when we talk about loyalty to God. Paul, with all that he had achieved and all that he knew, with the status in society he was, he could have maintained. He let them go so he can serve God as he should. He, he suffered the loss of all things. I heard the other day that Someone, when he gave his life to Christ, he was an engineering uh, graduate, an engineer too. He has been working. But, I mean, when he understood this issue of salvation and he felt the call of God on his life to preach the gospel, to serve the Lord, he actually took out his engineering certificate and taught them to pieces. <laughs> now, I know people will have different ideas, different thoughts about that, but that's what he did. I know we will justify why we will not do that. Oh, after all, we can serve God as an engineer. But that is his own. He was so committed to God. He felt loyal to him that, yes, Preaching the gospel or what he was going to do. And nothing was going to distract him or tempt him to go back. Oh. Loyalty to God is demanded of us. Now, let's examine the lesson that Jesus taught. He said in Matthew 6, 31 to 33, Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all other things shall be added to you. It is what Jesus said that we should not run after worldly, worldly stuff. What's important is to seek after God. And when we do, God will take care of us. The disciples, those 12 disciples, the other day, I mean, if you read John Fox's book of matters, you will see. All of them ended up, except perhaps uh, uh, John, the beloved. Not that they didn't attempt to kill him, but they couldn't. And God deals with us differently. 
those who knew Christ, who followed him, they went, they, they, they forsook their life. And they all ended up dying martyrs' death. And Jesus said, when Peter said, look, we have left all things to follow you. Jesus said, surely I say to you, there's no one who has left house or parents or brothers or wife or children for the sake of the kingdom of God who shall not receive many times more in this present time and in the age to come. Eternal life. So, loyalty. We can't go wrong and we remain loyal to God. When we are totally given to God. And the reward hmm. the reward is honestly out of this world it's out of this world even though just what we have just read he says there is none who have given made a decision to follow me who shall not receive many times more in this present time and in the age to come eternal life John 6, 40, Jesus said, and this is the will of him who sent me. And everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. You become God's close friend and you attract his attention and receive his favor when you follow him. When you are loyal to him. When you forsake everything for the cause of God. Jesus did that for us. And he had not like that. John 15, 13 to 15. Greater love has no one than this. And to lay down one's life for his friend. You are my friend. If you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants. For a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have had from my father. I have made known to you. Now in all of this. Loyal as we may be, and indeed we are required to be loyal, there is no guarantee of a trouble-free life here. The fact that you remain committed, as loyal to God, and you should be, does not mean you will not have trouble. <laughs> you and I will probably not do better than the apostles. And they all ended up uh, one violent death or the other. No. The reward is not in this world. And indeed, Jesus said it, John 16, 33. This things I have spoken to you, that in, my, in me you will have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You will have trouble. You will have conflict. You will have trials in this world. But in Christ you will have peace. Remember, he overcame, and you will overcome too. In conclusion, the mind of God is to have all men to be restored back to him. He does very little to attempt to be loyal to God without being born again. You must be born again, and you must know him personally. Biblical examples are bound that presents to us what becoming Loyal to God entails. It is personally sacrificial to be loyal to God. But the reward equally abounds with God for eternity. Let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Let the word that has gone out mix with faith in the hearts of the hearers. And turn the hearts of men back to you. And as many as will choose to follow you, to give their life to Christ, to be born again. Lord, receive them. You said, whoever comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. 
Give them understanding of your will and your way. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen.